Gary uncovers God's plan for healing your finances, spirit, mind, and emotions. Totally Heal, today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. When we first started television, of course, television was difficult to pay for and do. If you know, if you know me personally, it's not something I do really comfortably. I, don't, I'm not really, you know, I didn't really desire to do television. I'm not an outward person. And television was totally foreign to me as God asked us to do television. And then to pay for it, you know, the pressure of all that, uh, it just got discouraging there for a little bit. And one day, you know, God is, God is so good. I'll tell you what. A lady was in desperate financial straits, her and her husband, and they were, they were in serious, serious need. She had a dream in the night. In the dream, she saw a man standing talking about the Bible named Gary Cassie. She had no clue who I was. She, the d- dream was so vivid, she woke her husband up and said, do you know a guy named Gary Cassie? He said, never heard of him. Well, she went back to sleep. The next day, she was flipping through the channels and she saw me on the television set on Sid Roth. My name was on the screen. She was shocked. She stopped and listened. She called Tracy, our secretary, and told the story and said, I'll take whatever he's got. I need, I need the material. You know, you know, she was encouraged, and I'm sure they learned a lot from the teaching we gave them and instruction about the kingdom of God. But really, I don't believe it's, I mean, it was for her. But God could have led her there without me being involved. He could have seen the television show, heard me talking about money. But I believe that she had a dream with me in the dream and told Tracy, my secretary, for me. You see, I had, I, knew that, I had to know that God knew my name and that television was making a difference and that was actually getting out there and people were actually being touched by the effort that I was putting into it. And so I believe that, amazingly, she knew my name. God knew my name. And when I heard that story, I was highly encouraged. Wait a minute, God knows my name. If he knows my name, he knows the bills. If he knows, if he knows the bills, you know, no, I'm serious. He knows all the facts, right? I mean, look at the stars. I mean, if, if he called me to do this, I mean, he knows my name. He knows what I'm doing. Hey, we can relax, right? It's going to be taken care of. And it was. Of course, now the bills are, you know, 300000 a month compared to twenty, And he still takes, takes care of them, right? Amen. Take your mind off those problems. Put your thoughts and your attention to what God says about you, what he says about the situation. Change the picture on the inside. Let the word of God give you the solution, show you the solution. This lady is in New Zealand, and she tells a story that uh, her sister and her were uh, tired of being without money, tired of being in lack, and they said, we've got to figure out how God says to do money. And so they joined hands, they prayed and asked God, teach us how money works your, your way. And the very next day, her sister finds fixing the money thing on the internet. Coincidence? I don't think so. What do you think? I don't think so. And so they listened. They were, they were so thrilled uh, with what the kingdom had in it. She ordered material. She began to teach people. And she, this whole email, she's just so excited. She says, I just shared with this lady what uh, the kingdom says and what you, you teach. And let me tell you what happened to her. This person's employer refused to pay her for extra work she had done. Although she tried to dispute their actions, they wouldn't budge. Because she had not signed a contract with them, they refused to pay her, even though she had worked for three months on this extra project. Apparently, this battle had been going on for months. When I shared with her your teaching about the earth curse system, the kingdom of God, and I encouraged her to sow for a release of the finances owed her from this employer. Seven hours after sowing... The money was electronically deposited into her bank account. On top of that, her employer gave her a pay raise, a bonus, a letter of apology, and served her a tea party. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> Talk about justice restored. I remember this is, 
This is Australia, or she's from New Zealand, so this is from the English background of tea. You know, they had the tea. And so they honored her with the tea party. Thank you for sharing the kingdom, she says. And it's interesting that God knew their names. What I'm saying is she prayed and she found, right? Let me, let me repeat it for you. She prayed, she trusted God, and she found. Are you getting it? The Holy Spirit made sure that she connected to a solution for her problem. And if you will do the same when you face a problem, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, 6. I don't know, what is your dictionary? Nothing. What does it mean? Be anxious for? Do you think it really means that? Do you really think it means that? Be anxious for nothing. Why? <laughs> well, again, you can't just say be anxious for nothing, church over. You, gotta have, you have to have an answer, right? You have to have a solution. Be anxious for nothing but in all things through prayer and supplication. Let your request be known to God with thanksgiving. And the Bible says then his spirit, his peace will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus because you've received. Even though you may not see it yet, even as you're sitting here, there are angels. The Holy Spirit is working on your behalf right now. Right now. Right now. The Bible says, cast your care on the Lord, for he cares for you. Yes. Now, I want you to think of that picture of the stars. That's why I have it in my office. Think of those stars, 10,000 galaxies in that one little spot. They think there's hundreds of billions of galaxies. Who knows how many stars? But God has each one of them named. That is amazing. Friend, your problems are not very big when you look at God. You take his promises as they are written, all 7,000, and you receive them personally. Friend, how can you be afraid? You have legal rights in the kingdom. You're a citizen of the kingdom of God. You're a member of his household. Amen? Amen. 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 This is why... Psalms 91, verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Let's say that together. I will say of the Lord, he is my, let's put the emphasis on my, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Personal. He's your father. And Jesus taught the disciples to pray in Matthew chapter 6. He said, stop babbling like unbelievers. You're not an orphan. You're not an orphan. Stop babbling. He said, stop babbling, thinking that you'll be heard because of your many words. Your Father in heaven already knows what you have need of, so pray like this. Our Father, who is in heaven, how great is your name? How great is your authority? My Father, how great is your authority, your kingdom, your kingdom, your government, your authority come now as it is in heaven into the earth realm. My Father. He says, you don't beg. He says, my Father, my Father, your authority, your kingdom, your government, I'm a citizen. Come now in the name of Jesus, right? And so, friend, God already knows you have need of. You can rest in him, cast your cares upon him, walk with him. One little story I want to finish up with, which is interesting too. In those early days of television, of course, the monies had to come in. I mean, you know, we we're building the building and we were paying $20,000 uh, for airtime a month. That was a lot of money. It's still a lot of money, but it's a lot of money when, you know, hundreds of thousands are going out the door to pay and build things and we didn't have the 20000 But it came in every month except this one month. And uh, it didn't come in. Bill was due. My uh, accountant called me and said, hey, we got to pay this bill, $17,000 today, to this one, uh, you know, broadcast uh, network. We don't have it. We don't have it in the account. So I said, all right. Drend and I will write a check out. I mean, we'll, we'll cover it. Now, the Bible says in Corinthians that God loves a cheerful giver. I have to admit <laughs> I have to admit, I'll be honest, on that day, you know, <laughs> you know, on that day, it caught me off guard. I really wasn't a cheerful giver, you know. But uh, I'm in charge. I understand God's kingdom. I, I know sowing and reaping. I understand that part of it. But for some reason that day, I was tired. You know, it's just, we're in a battle. And, uh, you know, it just caught me off guard. 
So I was kind of moping around. You ever do that? I don't recommend it. <laughs> it doesn't really help, does it? No, it doesn't help anything. So we had an evangelist coming in town that night for service, and we're talking, you know, he travels. I mean, we're, you know, we're on the road. I mean, we're both ministers, so we, we can talk, you know. I'm telling him this situation, and I mean, I just, I just felt, you know, I just felt so discouraged. And as I was talking to him, my cell phone rang. It was one of my elders. He said, Pastor Gary, he said, I, I just had to call you. He says, I apologize. Apologize for what? Well, yesterday, someone actually gave me a check for $20,000 for the TV ministry, and I didn't give it to you. And today, I thought I'd wait till service on the weekend, but the Holy Spirit said, no, you got to call Pastor Gary right now and tell him that you have this check. So I'm talking to this guy. I get the phone call, and I say, just forget everything I've said. (laughs) 